Dr. Yuan Chin is going to come up and give us an update on what's happening from a quality perspective as well as an outreach perspective for providers. I'm sorry. So good evening, and it's really good to see so many people out here this evening. Uh, my name is Kevin Ewan Chin. I am a practicing physician, a family physician by training, and I serve as Chief Medical Officer for Intercommunity Health Network CCO. And I wanted to tell you about some of the initiatives that are going on in our three-county region and how you as the public may hear about these initiatives. And I'm going to talk about the issue of a public health crisis that we currently have, not only in our nation, but in our state. And our three-county region is not immune to this public health crisis. If we would have had the conversation many years ago about the amount of motor vehicle accident deaths that are occurring, we would bring this up and talk about it from a public health perspective. We would ask ourselves, why is this occurring? And what can we do to decrease the amount of motor vehicle accident deaths? Thus, we wear seatbelts. But today, still with the wearing of seatbelts, we still have deaths from motor vehicle accidents. One of the emerging crises that are upon us right now is overdoses from opioid medications. And in our nation, and in our state, and in our three county region, we have more people that are dying accidentally from overdoses of opioids, more people dying from accidental opioid overdoses than motor vehicle accidents in our country. It's an issue. What opioids are, are, are if we think of opium that comes from the poppy, it's the same uh, chemical that inserts into the brain in our pain receptors. And I'm talking about medications called hydrocodone, oxycodone, Vicodin, Percocet, Tramadol is another opioid medication. All these medications overall are contributing to accidental overdoses. And practicing physicians like myself, we need to own this because these are not medications that are being manufactured in meth mills. These are legally prescribed prescriptions that are being used and in some ways misused by people that may not have a prescription. And we have to get the word out from a public health perspective that we have to change the paradigm. Practicing physicians often use evidence to help guide their decisions. And it's been over the last few years that we have seen that the evidence for long-term opioids for chronic conditions is lacking. I'm not talking about hospice care, palliative care, cancer pain. But I'm talking about conditions like fibromyalgia that is a legitimate condition but we've seen in the studies done for fibromyalgia that people actually do worse overall if they keep taking long-term opioid medications. And what we're seeing in the nation is as these opioids give a tolerance, which means you can take more and more and more and the body gets used to that level, but what happens then if we mix that with a disease state like chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, emphysema? or we have a condition like sleep apnea, where we're already not breathing as well through the night, and then you add in chronic opioids, this is what we're seeing is people are accidentally dying in their sleep. And again, we as physicians need to own this. So as part of the momentum of the Oregon Health Plan addressing opioid use for chronic back pain conditions, it set up a, a series of discussions amongst practicing physicians and then a chronic opioid safety task force for our three county region was developed. We have public health officials, primary care physicians, specialty physicians, pain management physicians. We have addictions and mental health specialists. We have the fire people available, EMT. We are looking at this from a, from a public perspective. And we do have solutions. We want to make sure that as we are delivering solutions to the community, to practicing physicians, to our patients, and to our members of the health plan, that we never vilify people that have pain. Pain is legitimate, and pain is of the human condition. Pain doesn't really originate in my fingertips. I have nerve endings there, but pain, the origin of pain, is actually right here in my brain. This is never to say to patients that you're making up pain, and that's sometimes the message people will feel. 
but the ability of the brain through cognitive behavioral therapy to rechange how we're viewing pain is very legitimate and real. There's something called neuroplasticity. We can actually retrain neurons in the brain to change its perception of pain. And there's a lot of new emerging techniques that we can give to our community members that may be on long-term opioids. So in, in leaving that, I, I want to make sure that if you know of people that are on chronic medications, opioids, you yourselves or family members, that this is never ever a takeaway. This is actually going to be a replacement. We want to see what we can do with successful decreasing of opioids in general, only from a public health perspective again, but in return, what can we do to replace other modalities that have been shown to work to successfully ease pain? Pain will always be there with the human condition, but there are a lot of options that we can utilize. They probably haven't utilized to our best resources in the past. So I'll stop there, but I wanted you to be aware that that's one of the initiatives that IHNCCO is involved in, and we're partnering together with many of the practicing physicians and pain specialists in addictions and mental health in our three-county region. So more to come on that. Thank you.